a short meditation like this, you've got to be really intent on what you're doing to get the most out of it. Otherwise, it's just a few minutes of quiet and then it's gone. Really pay attention to what you're doing. Be, try to be on top of your mind. Don't let the least little thing sneak in, aside from what you're doing with the breath. Think of the breath filling the whole body, filling your whole awareness. If you're going to be thinking butto, think of every cell in your body saying butto, butto, butto. Try to clear everything else out, because the mind gets cluttered as it goes through the day. This thought about that, this, this person said that, that person said this. Got this little job to do. We got this little thing we did yesterday. I mean, all these things just nibble away at your awareness if you're not careful. So, especially when you have only a short meditation like this, you've got to be on top of it right from the beginning and just stay right here. And then, as you leave the meditation, do your best to maintain your sense of having a center. Think of it as a bowl of oil and balanced on your head. It's filled to the brim, and you don't want the oil to spill out. So you've got to be careful. And John Fuhrman would use, would use the Thai word brakong, which means to hover over something, to take care of it. The way a mother hovers over a child is the child is learning how to walk. You don't grab the child, but at the same time you don't go far away. You're right there, protecting what you've got here. Because it's in the protecting of your stillness that you learn a lot about your mind. A lot of people think that well, you do concentration, and then you drop the concentration, and then you do insight work. But the two have to go together, and a large part of the insight comes in seeing what it is that pulls the mind off and learning how not to get pulled off. Seeing the little ways that the mind justifies to itself that, well, I'll take a little of this, I'll think a little of that. And that tendency of the mind, then it just gets spread throughout the whole day, and, never, and your concentration gets eaten up and you don't really observe anything. But if you can see, oh, this is what pulls my mind out, this is why I like to think about this, then you can try to see through that so it doesn't pull it out. So there's a lot of discernment that comes just with protecting your concentration. And this way the two go together. As the Buddha said, insight helps your tranquility, tranquility helps your insight. They should work together. And this is how they do that. Have a strong sense that the stillness of the mind is really important. We have that chant about having respect for the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the triple training and all. What's interesting is it mentions the triple training, and then it goes ahead and says, but and also respect for concentration. It has to emphasize that fact, because concentration often gets overlooked. People get a little bit still and they say, well, what's next? Well, the concentration should be, what's next? You stick with it, protect it, give it your full attention. And then it will give you some rewards. Not only a good place to stay, but also a good place to gain insight into what's going on in your own mind. So do your best to get the mind to settle down as quickly as possible, and then learn how to protect it. The thoughts that say, this is boring, nothing's happening, let those go. They're hiding something that's happening, because all the interesting things in the mind are happening in the present moment. It's just that. We're not used to having them stripped down like this, but it's when they're stripped down that you can see them more clearly.